Hello and welcome to video 17 of our option pricing and trading strategy series. Uh, I'd now like to look at uh, spreads. So spreads are uh, compound option positions taken where you have two calls, one long and one short, or two puts, one long and one short. And we'll be talking about bull spreads, which are spreads which profit when prices of the underlying asset rise. And we'll also be talking about bear spreads, which are spreads that provide a profit if stock prices or the price of the underlying stock falls. So we'll start off by talking about a call bull spread. And in this case, I'll go long one call two and I'll go short one call three <clears throat> and here we see our profit diagram the net total uh, with before we go into the detail the first thing we notice is we have a maximum gain and a maximum loss so we have a limited gain limited loss a defined risk position and over here are the pieces uh, this is the net total. The violet line, the lavender line, is the short call. And the olive colored line is the long call. We'll notice the bend for the long call occurs at 31, while the bend for the lavender short call profit diagram bends at 32. And of course, this is profit as a function of stock price at option expiration. We know that because here you see time to expiration is uh, 1 e to the minus 10. <clears throat> so um, a, a very small number, uh, decimal point, and then nine zeros, and then the number 1. So the time to expiration is effectively the moment of expiration. So we get this profit diagram from the combination of the olive and the lavender. Let's look at this for a second. Uh, up to this point, at strike price 31, and ignore those little dips, that's just a, uh, a consequence of the Excel charting algorithms. Um, up to this point, both slopes are zero, so the slope of the net total line is zero. Between 31 and 32, the slope of the long call was positive, but the slope of, you know, specifically plus 100, and the slope of the short uh, 32 call is still zero, so that slope is going to be the sum of zero and plus 100 or 100. And then beyond this point, where the strike price is 32, the slope of the short call is negative 100, and every point Beyond that, the slope of the long call is plus 100, and of course, beyond this point, the net total line sums to zero, because negative 100 plus 100 is zero, and so we see that working. Um, <clears throat> this is a call bull spread. We make money at higher prices, we lose money at lower prices, okay? And we've made this call bull spread out of calls, of course, okay? <clears throat> we notice the call bull spread is a net debit spread, the lower strike call, someone has the right to pay 31, and that's us, and we own it, and we also have sold to someone else the right to pay 32, and there's no way that the 32 call could ever have a higher price than the 31 strike call, at least in equilibrium, and therefore we pay more for the lower strike call than we receive for running the higher strike call, hence we have a net debit spread. Now we can also create the same profit diagram by using put options, okay? So now I'll show you how we can create that bull spread by using puts. This would be a put bull spread. And so what I will do here is I will go <coughs> long, <coughs> excuse me, hmm. I'll go, let's, let's see what happens. Long put two and short put three, okay? And see what happens. Well, my goodness, we have the, the same profit diagram. It's a bull spread. We make money at high prices. 
we lose money at low prices. In between, we have a slope of plus 100. You can see that slope a little better over here. And uh, so when we go <coughs> short the higher strike put and long the lower strike put, we create a bull spread also. We create a bull spread also. This is a put bull spread. And we notice something interesting. <clears throat> since we're selling the right to pay, excuse me, since we're selling one contract of the right to sell stock at $32 a share, and we're buying a put that involves the right to pay $31 a share, the 32 strike put the right to sell at 32 will always be, well, will almost always be higher than the right to sell at 31. They could both be zero late in their lives in certain circumstances. But the right to sell here is almost always higher than the right to sell here. And since we're going short this and going long this, the amount we receive to write the 32 strike exceeds the amount we pay uh, to buy the 31 strike here. You see we're going to sell at 134, we're going to buy at 85, and that's what we see here, 134 paying 85, net 47. So we make an important observation, and that observation again is that when we create a bull spread out of puts, we get a net credit. Put bull spreads are net credit spreads. We had just seen that call bull spreads are net debit spreads. Okay, well let's, uh, let's create now a bear spread. Okay, so I'll start with calls. Let's go um, short um, call two, one contract, and long call three, one contract. And there's the net total profit diagram. You can look over here to understand why it is what it is. <coughs> but this is the uh, call bear spread. We make money at lower prices, we lose money at higher prices. What prices? Stock prices at OE. The value on this horizontal axis. And uh, <clears throat> we receive 107, we pay 57, and therefore we note that this is a net credit spread. We have $48 coming in. The best that can happen to us here is that we make $48. Um, first of all, let me take out the commissions. Okay, the numbers will change a bit, okay? Uh, now we see it's a $50 net uh, credit spread. I, commissions are now out of the analysis. And we see the best thing that can happen to us is we make $50, okay? That's the best that can happen to us. And the worst that can happen is that we lose $50, okay? So a defined risk position. Notice that the distance from here to here, in this case, is 100, which is... Uh, as will always be the case, speaking generally, the distance from the maximum gain to the maximum loss will always be equal to the difference in the strike prices multiplied by the multiplier 100. So the difference in the strike prices here, um, which is 32 minus 31 is 1, times 100 is 100, and that's why the vertical distance from here to here, vertical distance is 100. And... Um, there's a break even, uh, of course. Uh, looks like the break even is is uh, at 31.50 exactly. Makes sense uh, if you think about it, you know, because here we have uh, 31, here we have 32 where the bends occur, and this is 50. That's 50, uh, minus 50. It makes sense that it would be right in the middle. 31.50 is where we break even on it. <coughs> It's unusual for that marker to be right there and to be the actual relevant point. Um, 31.5 comma zero, effectively zero. Alrighty. Um, the reason it's not exactly zero is because uh, of some value in the Black-Scholes options pricing model. Exit value uh, way to the right of the decimal. Um, but you need not overthink that. So there we have a call uh, bear spread, and we note that a call bear spread is a net credit spread. Okay, now let's create the same uh, profit diagram using uh, puts. Okay, so in this case, I will go long put three and short one contract of put two. 
<coughs> there we see the same profit diagram. Um, let's just see the values maybe off a dollar. Yeah. So now we make 49 at best. <coughs> we lose 51. It's just the nature of the pricing of calls and puts. Um, <coughs> that's just the way that it is. And of course, uh, we're buying the higher strike put, writing the lower strike put, and therefore we're paying more than we're receiving. So this is a net debit spread. We pay 51 bucks. Uh, and again, of course, that's why the worst that can happen to us is that we lose $51. And that will happen at any stock price um, 32 or higher. Now, so the next thing to observe is that we again have a break even and uh, one break even for the uh, bear spread for all of our spreads bull spread well for both of our spreads bear spreads and bull spreads there is a single break even and there are two strike prices that are relevant and again making the bear spread from puts we see it's a net debit spread and uh, spreads are extremely common uh, and uh, quite desirable because of the clarity of the defined risk. You have a limited gain and a limited loss, and many people find this comfortable. Uh, thank you for watching this video.